Thank you, sir. So we move on to the second event of the first session. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Nitish Rai, who has already come in. And I'll give a, a short brief on Mr. Nitish Rai. Nitish is uh, graduated in mechanical engineering from the Army Institute of Technology, ma mastered from SIBM, and has spent over 12 years in manufacturing, heavy engineering, and power industry working across the globe for major conglomerates and MNCs like Kirloskar, Thermax, and Fortum. Founded Freight Fox, it's not F-R-I-G-H-T, it is F-R-E-I-G-H-T, Freight Fox, with the vision to make logistics a competitive advantage to manufacturing industry through data and technology. So we are just moving on, hearing after from Mr. Kiran Deshmukh on the application part and what do we do. Freight Fox was recognized for advanced tech and data application by Niti Aayog and is a part of 100 plus accelerator powered by AB, InBave and Coca-Cola, Unilever and Colgate Palmolive. Uh, Nitish would take us through the digitization in logistics and uh, thank you very much Nitish for coming and now I invite you to uh, take the session and a big round of applause please. Uh, good morning everyone. So <clears throat> I traveled from Pune and there was a cyclone because of which uh, we all, we, I, I felt for the first time the uncertainty to the extent uh, I never felt and as we say uh, just in time is very famous uh, in the manufacturing. I reached here in somehow in time, and I'll not say the short form of it. You can figure it out. But um, uh, thank you so much uh, for having me. Uh, I'll be taking you through some of the some of the frameworks, some of the things which we can do in logistics to get a greater insight of our own operations and uh, how it behaves, why it behaves in a way we. Uh, so uh, probably uh, Kiran sir, what uh, what explained, and I, I saw some part of it. You will find some of the glimpse of things applying here as well. Uh, logistics generally, as we say, is all about uh, planning what will happen and then at the end probably explaining why it didn't. And uh, we'll find some of the reasons uh, while we uh, uh, see this presentation. Yeah, so uh, uh, we all uh, see that uh, the, the entire uncertainty or, uh, or the things which we face uh, in day to day uh, in, in logistics basically, whether a small enterprise, whether a large enterprise, it is basically disorder and when disorder is basically dealt with data insights and right strategies which are derived out of it, we reach the order stage or we reach a stage where the randomness or the degree of randomness is lower. Uh, this, this graph would be, this site is, looks little busy here but uh, let me take you through a very simple logistic service quality model, uh, what we uh, work around in Freight Fox. Uh, you see the first one which is there, uh, which is, so uh, whenever we are doing logistics, so logistics have got two st key stakeholders. Uh, we have our customers on one end and we have uh, us at the other end. And uh, it is basically either we are doing it right or we are not doing enough or we are overdoing it. So all the three cases basically and uh, uh, this is not very clear but the one, the red line which you see is basically the competitive advantage vector which we talk about when the expectation of the customer matches with what we, uh, what we intend to deliver. There are cases or there are instances where, the, where we feel that everything is alright but customer feels it didn't. And there are cases where customer feels it is okay but we are overdoing it, we are feeling that it is not okay. All these three cases results into win-win situation, win-lose or lose-lose situation kind of a thing. Uh, which we'll explore in detail as we go along. The pillars which are there uh, for the logistics actually to measure the quality or to measure the performance as, as we say how well we are doing it is cost, service, capacity, sustainability and risk. These are the prime elements which we uh, assess, which we monitor to understand how well or how not well we are doing or probably a pulse check uh, for our logistics. <coughs> Yeah, what you see here is a very simple stochastic simulation. I, it is not a very detailed one, but just to give an example, what it shows is that even if our KPIs are running absolutely fine on, uh, on certain things, which is uh, our uh, order accuracy, our uh, order entry accuracy, inventory availability, but a little bit of deviation in the planning logistics, which is basically to the tune of around 10 to 15 percent, can actually deplete your value delivery to an extent of 30 to 35 percent. We can build this simulation for specific cases for specific things, but this is to convey 
that the dent which it creates is very, very deep. <clears throat> coming to a basic framework, and we'll be decoding this in, in the coming uh, slides as well, but uh, when we look at uh, the logistics uh, uh, as we are operating, we come across this kind of a, uh, we can, whatever we come across, we can put it in one of those four uh, uh, baskets, basically. So we can see the factors which are internal and external. For example, we can control the SNOP planning and other things, but the availability of trucks or availability of the uh, logistic capacity is external to us. Similarly, there are things in logistics which we can control and which we cannot control. Like uh, those are the things which basically form the uncertainty or the extent of uncertainty which we are going to uh, face. So if we look at an example of an external factor which cannot be controlled, it generally is originating from something called as information opaqueness or we call it as information asymmetry. Because our knowledge as a manufacturer operating in an industrial cluster is not same as what we, so for example, uh, Sri Paramadur for example is a cluster. We at any point in time will not know that how many trucks have arrived in Sri Paramadur from Delhi which are ready to go back or which are available to take the capacity towards the northern region. It's an example where the information opaqueness plays an important role. Similarly, if we look at an example of internal and which cannot be controlled right now is lack of internal logistic operation visibility. And I'll elaborate more on it. It is not about uh, whether we know how much goods we are going to produce or how much goods we are going to move, but it is about knowing our own logistic operation DNA very well. To create and uh, to move towards the logistics as a competitive advantage, we have to internalize these external factors to understand that how they are going to affect us. And we have to also know about our own operation. So we create the visibility from outside in perspective, also inside out perspective. And when we do that, we generate or we create logistics as a competitive advantage. And that is how we are going to also understand in detail that how we assess and how we work towards these things. This is an example and uh, uh, if you'll see again, uh, it's looking slightly blur here. I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but let me take you through uh, the first. This is an example of how to understand our own internal operations well. So one of the examples which I have taken here is uh, a manufacturing company, a large manufacturing company, which is uh, basically operating across from two plants, about 110, 120 lanes, trade lanes within India. And we will see that you can see when we do consistency analysis. So what is consistency basically? In a very uh, nutshell, it is I planned as a logistic leader or as a logistic exec uh, executive, I planned that we will need 100 trucks on a particular trade lane during a particular month, <clears throat> we either ended up using 150 or ended up using 50, or we ended up using 95 to 100, is something which is consistent or underestimation or overestimation of our own capacities. Although on the surface of it, it looks very uh, harmless uh, kind of a thing when we plan it, but when we look at the cost escalations, when you correlate your logistic budget and the cost escalations with the underestimated trade lanes and overestimated trade lanes, you will observe that there are always the lanes which are under or overestimated are the most problematic ones, where the transport partners, where your uh, logistic partners will find it really difficult to serve. Will, you'll find severe service failures, cost escalations, everything around these loans. So that is how uh, at FreightFox we have created these uh, proprietary frameworks to understand that how our own lanes behaviors are there. And this is based on the granular data of day-to-day -day dispatches which is there. Similarly, one of the key things is now I said that I need 50 trucks, I have ordered 50 trucks also, but what happened is during 1st to 25th of the month I ordered 10 and now I want 40, right? So that is basically the skewness which is also very, very inherent. It is, uh, it is basically the priced invoicing which, which runs, which we chase at the end of the month, which causes, so the graph which you see here basically decodes that what is my skewness levels across the months and across the operations. And that skewness, how it is impacting the freight cost escalations which are coming in or the logistic cost escalations which are coming in. So this is uh, one of the very small examples of understanding our own internal operation. So know, know ourselves well before we understand the market and before we align to the market. <clears throat> What you see here is also one of a very, uh, very uh, important framework developed by us, wherein what you see on the, on the so this is a basically a typical network diagram of a, of a manufacturer operating with, say, about eight manufacturing plants and about six distribution centers. 
if you look at the the we do a lot of uh, customer segmentation market segmentation we call it as segmentation targeting promotion a lot but when it comes to logistics we are treating it as like a single animal it where it, it is not so if you look at what we do is on the on the y axis we plot something called as origin to destination rate so for example if you have planned in shri perambudur or chennai and let's say chennai to delhi chennai to kolkata chennai to uh, say mumbai or pune will become your origin to destination your origin on the x axis what we plot is we have a very developed credible freight intelligence system which plots the do rates which is basically destination to origin rates which is basically if i plant is in chennai we plot delhi to chennai kolkata to chennai pune to chennai and then we see where we are getting our scatter and this once you get this data you will be able to categorize your lanes into the characteristics so the quadrant one which you see are called as dense halls dense hall are the lanes which are the lanes where you will find every transport partner coming in logistic partner coming in asking for give me the share of business on this lane because this is some this is where the traffic on both the ways is very very good and i want this the moment and the biggest headache which you will always feel for which your phones will be ringing late night everything happening would be the second quadrant head halls head halls are basically the lanes where nobody is getting so if a typical example is chennai to kolkata chennai to guwahati now i can, i am ready to go to guwahati but i want double the freight because i have least expectation that i am going to get something from here although this looks like a very conventional wisdom but when we break it down on the data we get a real insight of our network completely so we divide or segment our network into head halls dense halls lean halls reverse halls reverse halls are the most comfortable ones because they are favoring us what we have to do as as the as the leadership is we have to categorize the number of trade lanes the volume and the freight which we are paying on each of these quadrants to understand the risk we are we are carrying along with it so that is how we segment further our internal so we take a visibility in the internal uh, operations uh, this again is a third example wherein what we do is and again this is developed by us is you can see on the x axis is the distance in kilometers of the origin destination and on the y axis we call it as a lane imbalance ratio we call it as od by do ratio so it is called as origin to destination and destination to origin ratio you will find that od do ratio may vary all the way from uh, 0.87 0.98 all the way to 3 3.6 which shows the imbalance which is existing in that particular trade lane now why it is important is because if my volume exposure to a trade lane which is having a higher imbalance ratio is there we may expect larger disruptions we may expect larger information opaqueness in these lanes and there is a different strategy which we need to follow for green zone yellow zone and red zone and you will see i have just popped up a small graph upwards also that when we pin down this location we also look at what is the market behavior on that and there are box plots which are there and which shows so what we look at is we simply take let's say a sampling of the freight rates which are there and the system generated or the machine learning freight rates which are there to understand that whether the market at any given point in time and when i say market is freight market is exploratory or decisive <clears throat> one of the simpler example and if you want me to express in a matrix would be that uh, if the interquartile range iqr quoted on a on a normal distribution curve is narrow or larger and how it is varying if we observe the iqr or the semi iqr we'll be able to get whether the market is exploratory or decisive so those are the decision which we can take based on our own internal operations <clears throat> now going to the external part so i covered the internal frameworks there are more but uh, given the time and the constraints i have shared those frameworks now going to external now we know about the internal alignment we understand about our own operations but it is very important to equally understand that how the external market is behaving and that is where we need to understand for our industry and uh, and I, i would like to share that uh, the correlation between the freight rate is not generic to the uh, to the one of the industry so for example chennai or any cluster you take uh, the the manufacturing industry would see a different kind of freight behavior alco bev industry alcohol based industry will see a very different behavior if you go to fmcg it will see a very different behavior so they are all very very different and that is why in india we need a very credible framework to actually predict the freight rates based on region based on industry and based on the time of the month or time of the day that is what we have achieved what you are seeing here is a geospatial analytics of the how the freight rate variations are happening across the corridors and this we could get uh, through, we were among the one of the first companies to get integrated with unified logistics interface platform 
with which we can pull the data to understand the lane segmentation behavior which is happening across the country on a broader level. And how do we segment it is, if we look at, if I <coughs> look at uh, the toll data, it is very interesting. Uh, the toll plazas, which are wherever the fast tag transactions are happening, if we observe that data, we'll understand the split of the trucking is basically about 35 to 37% is open trucking, which is more towards the agri movement. You will see a lot of movement happening around the agri seasons. 60 to 65% is more towards the industrial logistics, which is happening in the more containerized location. Now the problem is, the government data cannot pin down whether the truck which passed through a toll plaza was a container or not. Right, so we, we get the broad data and the category of the vehicles, you would have heard a lot of names, but how a toll system understands the vehicle type is something called as VC5, VC6, VC7, VC8, VC9, VC10, VC11. Right, that's the difference. So we need to match a lot of non-synchronous data to actually reach this level and understand that how various geographies would be behaving in terms of uh, their uh, freight rates or the logistic profiles. Similarly, when we look at <coughs> now, uh, the one which you saw was more towards the demand side of things. So demand side as in if the agri movement, so for example, in I come from uh, Pune, so when the, when the grapes start to come in in Nasik, you will suddenly see the vehicles from 400, 500 kilometer catchments rushing into that particular zone to pick up loads. So that was the demand side story. But what is the supply side story? So we have only certain number of vehicles which are getting added up in the particular year. What you see, uh, the first graph which you see which is going about 45 degrees for some time is the heavy goods vehicle capacity addition in north, east, west and south zones. Now you'll observe a typical slump which is the COVID time but it is picking up again. Why we do this is because finally the freight rate is a function of marginal capacity which is available in the market at given point in time. And if the marginal capacity is chasing too much of demand, that is where we see the volatilities coming into the picture. That is why it is very important to understand the cumulative capacities available at any given point in time at in any given market. Similarly, there are other factors like what you see again, the image is not very clear, but it is basically with the distance, how the toll rates vary. So India, toll rates is not, uh, not some magic, basically uh, toll rates are revised every April and August and there is an act which defines that to what proportion a toll rate should change. So very well built in mechanisms by us in order to predict that what is going to be the proportion of toll rates, what is going to be the proportion of fuel and in fact I am not presenting here but we have developed the cost simulator models as well for the specific truck types in order to predict what is going to be the supply side pressure on a given market. <clears throat> so this is also a very interesting simulation where I am just trying to show one truck type which is um, uh, since we all see basically from manufacturing automotive industry uses 32 feet single and multi axle containers and if you look at how we do a stochastic simulation to understand that based on a utilization function and marginal capacity function how the cost can vary or how the volatility in the pricing can come is something which is demonstrated here. There are very well uh, complex models also which are built specifically for the industry but it basically shows that if our base level utilization, now the, the example of this is that if we are hiring the truck which is running in a catchment of 300 kilometers or 500 kilometers, the utilization is going to be less than 2000 kilometers annually which will have an impact on the rates. Now how much would the impact be is dependent on a lot of factors which are covered under these simulations or models. So we have to understand the, the internal part, external part, supply side, demand side, and then simulate it. And I would say we have to run probability simulations to understand. We cannot create a static Excel file to deal with a market which is changing every minute. Based on that, what we do is the industry 4.0, which we are going after or which we want to go after the broad digitalization is not possible unless we also have logistics catching up at the same level. Because finally it is not about just the material which we are producing, but it is also the material pipeline across which it is moving. So we must have a very clear visibility of material pipeline across, across our operating zones, plants, distribution centers, everything. So a digital twin of a logistic network is something which, which helps the manufacturing companies or enterprises to understand that what is going to be the disruptions, impact of disruptions, if at all happening. So for example, cyclone which came a day before or uh, passed last night, how it is going to impact the 32 feet multi excel capacity is the question we should answer with data. So that is what we are, we are after and that's what we are building upon. Similarly, coming to the next part, 
very important part we understood everything visibility we call it as visibility visibility we want visibility so visibility is important but it is not the truck gps which gives the visibility that's just the truck basically right we are not after the truck location we are after where is my material right and that is why in transit inventory visibility becomes very very important to our observation and again it is limited by where we have engaged and worked uh, even if the truck level visibility is at 70% 80% the in transit inventory level visibility is as low as 30%. Now that is a major problem because we do not understand at any given point in time what is my value of my finished good or my raw material on the road because that is the highest risk thing. What we have done here is because of this uh, government, uh, the working with government and all, we have integrated with uh, the entire fast tag system which is there on our platform, developed the technologies to derive sense out of that data, map to any truck integrated with the eWable system, which is also there because now every movement, every invoice have eWable associated with it and create a very clearly and replicable material pipeline in the real time for the organizations. So that we understand that how it is flowing, where it is flowing, how it is going to impact, what is going to the impact of disruptions on any given zone or lane which we are operating on. Coming to sustainability, very important piece and uh, when, we, when it comes to scope 1 and scope 2 emissions, we all know about it. Uh, it, is, it is easier to control because it is either my factory or my vendor's factory or my partner's factory. But when it comes to scope 3 emissions, especially relating to packaging, especially relating to transportation operations and distribution operations, we have low to no control on what we are going to get. Now, for example, I have called for a 32 feet multi XL truck, but I don't know whether I'm going to get a three year old truck, six year old truck, 10 year old truck or 15 year old truck. I don't know if I'm going to get a BS2 vehicle, BS3 vehicle, BS4 vehicle or BS6 vehicle. Because I have seldom seen and you can introspect that none of these are the KPIs of procurement while we go for logistic procurement. That is why you see we created a complete digital profile of the footprint. So emissions per capita of product shipped by manufacturer across the country. Uh, to estimate what is the CO2 emissions per, for example, hectoliter of beer shipped or for, for example, per case shipped. Depending on the profile, again, the visibles are not there, but in the real time, we are providing the information that what is the age mix of the trucks we are deploying, what is the fleet mix we are deploying, what is the kind of uh, uh, the fuel type we are deploying in the network, and what is the collective impact through a telematics data in the real time at a trip level, the emission which is happening. Now, what it means is, that the emission profile of a truck traveling from Pune to Mumbai is not same as from Mumbai to Pune because there is a difference in fuel consumption which happens and this methodology is approved by GLEC which is Global Logistic Emission Council Framework which works on something called as energy based bottom up approach, EBBU approach which we adopt to. <coughs> yeah, this is just a glimpse why it is important and we all know it is important but uh, uh, the supply chain emissions are 11.4 times of what operation emissions are and 3% of the vehicle population in India is commercial vehicles, but they contribute 34% to carbon emissions and almost 53% to PM emissions, which is one of, the, one of the reasons why Delhi keep on getting a lot of restrictions every time we hear in the news. Going a little bit in detail, and again, this is a busy slide, but uh, what, what it shows is basically the impact of a particular truck type usage. So whether I'm using a age old truck, whether I'm using a Bharat stage two, three or four trucks, actually defines for a particular factory, what is going to be my emission profile or what is going to be my carbon emission spread. And if you see the one in between where we are using 16 to 20 years old truck very frequently, Bharat stage two trucks, you look at the 75th percentile kilograms of CO2 per hectoliter of beer shipped, it clearly shows the difference basically. Why this is important is because now we are, now ESG is coming in, BRSR is coming in. We are, as, as industry leaders, we are moving towards a time when the sustainability is going to get linked with the financial goals also. And that is why it becomes very crucial to go to the granular level of this data and to ensure that when we are next time doing procurement or next time doing supply chain setup, KPI setup, this should become an integral part of it. Coming to the one of the uh, uh, pillars, uh, and this is, a, this is the last pillar, which is risk, basically. Uh, what we do in the supplier selection, and, uh, and again, manufacturing industry have been doing a lot. But in transportation and in, in our observation, what we have observed is something called as uh, the typical uh, supplier selection, which is static or stagnant kind of a process, doesn't work well. 
And therefore, what we have adopted and tested is something called as MCDM or AHP, Analytical Hierarchy Process Approach, towards, for example, if there are seven people in the logistic team and they all have a different qualitative and quantitative parameters, they all are important, we cannot uh, cut down on anything, then what we do is we do a relative grading of what is important over what, and then actually uh, do a complete algorithm using AHP to select the right partners. Also, we also look at, again, the risk profile is not specific, or sorry, it is not generic. It again depends on which industry we are dealing with. So the risk profile of the same transport partner with somebody who is having a payment term of 30 days versus 90 days is going to vary. And therefore, it is very important for us to pin down that what is the financial investigation and risk estimation to default. So what we do is, we inculcate these models to understand that for a particular transport partner, what is the probability of contract failures or what is the probability of contract defaults we are looking at if we have a large exposure to that particular partner, how to mitigate it. And so this becomes a very important pillar in addition to what we have seen so far. <clears throat> uh, just to summarize and capture what we look at is and what we, what we uh, do in terms is basically to have or generate insights integrated with our operations and to make, make it immersive. Immersive means it, making it into a day-to-day -day or routine basically when we are operating. And I will not go into the process of it, but uh, always do your spin, which is the spend insights. Categorize, segment your lanes, understand the internal alignment, external alignment, derive the right strategies, and then make the KPIs or take actions which are there. And logistics, it is very important to be in the real time. Uh, absolutely important to be in the real time. Sure, just quickly, I'll not take much time, I'll just covering what we do exactly. FreightFox is a platform which uh, basically has, is an enterprise uh, logistics platform, having an end-to-end -end complete uh, spectrum of solutions which are there. We have been part of and working with government very closely. We were integral part of uh, the launch of national logistic policy, wherein uh, the solution and the platform which we gave for development of Bharat Mala project or the industrial corridor development was something which was derived on the real-time data, and uh, we worked very closely for that with Niti Aayog and PMO. Uh, we were also one of the winners at the National Logistics Hackathon, which was organized by Niti Aayog again, and uh, demonstrated very credible solutions, what we saw some of the frameworks earlier, for uh, enhancing the logistic efficiency at the national scale or at the country scale. Some of the customers whom we trust, and we are, we are in this journey, we are two year old, but we are trusted by some of the very uh, large brand names and working with them very closely. Uh, one of the very interesting thing is we collaborated with Yale University in US, and I was saying that our, if you look at the X, Y axis, our contracts are generally a straight line across the time axis, whereas the market is actually constantly going up and down like a share market. What we are developing with Yale University is something called as responsive freight contracts, where the contract itself can be indexed and can be varied based on the market movement. So those are some of the interesting developments which are right now happening as we speak. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Nitish. It was a wonderful overview from uh, what, what can really be done by using the data and uh, the real-time uh, solutions, what you are really providing. 2020 to 2022, an amazing uh, development, what we could see, and the way you summarized Really thankful to you. Now I call upon Dr. Pankaj Kumar uh, to please uh, come on the stage and show our uh, gratitude to Nitish. Thank you.